setting a fox set here. I want to show you the advantage of a chain. I'm actually setting this up. I'm using these are chain stakes. The wolf thing that's a heavy duty stake, and then I have it attached directly to the trap. What's nice about this over a cable is it will actually fall right down into the hole right below the trap and uh, you don't get the cable sticking up underneath it and you know being in the way and it works really nice I'm gonna set this sucker in here now and get it ready to go all right there's the first dirt hole set of the year I'm sat on a trail here uh, we got standing corn this goes into a big woods bluff right here. The path, travel path. I've already found sign on the path. If you look right behind my set, there actually there's my set dirt hole. I told you that little dirt hole punch, man. It really works well. Punched the perfect little hole in there for me. Your fox droppings right behind it, right there. I also found some on the path further up here. So hopefully this connects for me. I used a uh, little bit of fox urine, uh, I used Minnesota brand bait, uh, Cavens Minnesota Red, and Canine Force. Now hopefully that connects for me. Look at this. Right next to the outhouse. You gotta love it. Nice old book rub there. Further down the path I just seen a scrape too close to where I made that set. Starting to see a little bit of book sign. All right, there's that little scent box I made. I have it just downwind of the set. You see, I have the set uh, set along a, a corn row here, and I'm real happy with that dirt, the, that dirt hole punch. Man, it punches a nice hole. Boom. Good visual there. This runs along. A tree edge. I caught two foxes here last year. It runs along a tree edge here and then this year it's got standing corn. So when you, the foxes don't like to run in the in the corn although they will travel in it if they have to but they'll run the edges of it. I got a path along this way so they'll come down this path down this path. Now I have another set right here so if they come up or down wind is going this way so hopefully it draws something in. Last year they had clover here and it was much flatter so the foxes could run through it. But uh, this hedgerow here holds a lot of rabbits and squirrels and stuff, this, this tree line. Then where you see the other tree in the background right there, there's another crop field behind that. They just planted winter wheat in that. Uh, this corn will probably be up till the after the deer season. Or just, uh, just at deer season, the, the farmer will come in and cut this down. But we're all going to give that little scent box a try. See if this set connects. But I want to show you something here. You can see off the edge of the edge of the cornfield here, there's a trail. And that trail is like just begging for a set. Uh, here, that would not be a good idea because I know that's a deer trail. So you make a set in there, you get you know you get deer stepping in your in your traps and stuff. You don't want that. So I moved it have the set close enough to the trail so if the fox uses the trail he's he'll he's gonna be within wind that set and I ha it's open there I have it visual I flatten the grass down a little bit in front of it and the, the other grass behind it's backing so he has to come from the, the front to uh, investigate the dirt hole okay time for me to head home put a couple of sets in uh, this, this place is loaded with fox on I trapped a couple of foxes from here last year. Nice red fox. Uh, sometimes you get coyotes here. Not too often. Every now and again. I've never caught a gray fox here. Uh, there might be some around. It's a little bit open for gray fox. It's a it's, it's open farmland. There's only patches of trees. Not too much. You know, little patches of woods here and there. But the grays usually prefer you know thicker woods. But I I was here a couple of weeks ago maybe a week and a half ago 
checked it, found fox droppings all over the place. Came back today. Uh, landowner's gonna be in here deer hunting later, so I'm not gonna stick around too long, but uh, I checked it again. I had a little bit of a walk around and I found even more sun. So it's looking good that I'm gonna get at least one fox out of here, but I'm not gonna hex myself. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. I'll be back to check them in the morning now. We'll see what's going to go on. Well, apparently we're dealing with a clever fox here. Look at that. It dug the trap. It dug it right out. What I'm going to do is I'll recover it and leave it right where it is. Now, sometimes when they'll do this, what they'll do is they'll urinate on the trap and mark it. So what I might do is put another trap further here or maybe over here. I leave that one there. My other set too was dug as well. He didn't dig the trap out like that though. Look at that, he dug that out and he didn't even set it off. Fantastic. Maybe I'll have to not use a dirt hole and use a flat set instead. And you can see here, this is my other set. Right here and here where he was digging at it. Look at that. Didn't set it off though. The pan for this trap is right about there. He didn't hit the pan. <laughs> I can say I'm going to have my hands full with this guy. Okay, we're going to put in a little flat set here. The opposite side of my I'm gonna put a flat set in here on the opposite side of my dirt hole. I don't want to disturb stuff too, too much. I cut this notch out already with my uh, cookie cutter. Just take some of the loose dirt out of it. Pack it down so that is going to bed. I have a hard time bedding some of the traps here. Some of the soil, of course it's agricultural land. Some of the soil is real sandy. I'm going to use a Berkshire stake on this one. This is that Montgomery trap that I showed you in a previous video. Uh, for pencil tucky trapper These work pretty good for rocks too because they're thin uh, They'll also hold in mud But I'm gonna show you the, the stakes that I use here for I mean some of this ground is Hard you get down past the top soil You get into like 10 12 inches of ground and it is pack mud So it's it's hard and there's a lot of rock as well But these I've never had one of these come out just goes on the stake. Push it down into the ground. All right, we got the stake in. Hammer the chain down under the trap. So we're gonna try and bed this solid as possible. And I mean solid. If you get any little movement on these traps, they, they dig them. Any little bit at all. I'm gonna pack that ground in. I don't mind the little debris over the trap, but I don't want leaves. Leaves are slick. If the leaf gets stuck between the, the jaw, The leaf gets stuck between the jaw and his foot, it will slide out of the trap. The leaf is as good as grease. I'll give it a little more dirt in there. I want that hard in there. Hang 
cover. These are pan covers that I made myself. All it is is uh, screen door mesh. They sell it usually in a roll. Yeah, they sell it usually in a roll. So what you gotta do is cut out the shape you want and then lay it flat. So it stays flat, because it will have, it does have memory, it will lay. Just a little bit more. I was using dry dirt that I had taken in here, but not on this, I'm not going to do that. This is all going to be dirt from this area. Taking some pine needles. I'm gonna put a little bit of grass in on it. Now all I'm going to do with this, punch a hole there, doesn't have to be deep, punch a hole on the other side. Again, it doesn't have to be deep.
Okay, the other sets I've been using cavings. This time I'm gonna use uh, Red Brush. It's a curiosity lure. And I'm also gonna use Minnesota Fox urine. Just a couple of drops. I use different urine at the other sets. No dirt hole this time. Soak that in there. Get that in there. Couple of drops there. Couple of drops in there. Do not wear your gloves while you're using your lure. You do not want to do that. So it drips you right in there. A couple of drips in there. It. Let me sit there. Now, hopefully this set he, he won't see a dirt hole and he won't be so inclined to dig but you can see if I take the camera off the tripod here uh, let's see what fox droppings right behind me uh, right here right here right here so they're frequenting this area pretty good. That'll give him something to think about there. Hopefully he stumbles by on that flat set and has a walk around, but we'll see what happens. Okay, pencil turkey trapper. We're talking a little bit last night about anchors. There it is, the bullet point. And this is on a chain. Uh, this uses a metal rod driver. You can see the driver goes into the top of it there and then this drives down into the ground. And that, it's hard and these are heavy. And if you have a big enough hammer, even if you hit a small rock with that, it will crack that rock wide open. Uh, they can be difficult to get out. I have a tool to pull these out that I made. I have it attached to a regular swivel. It's about 18 inches of chain and then the regular trap chain. I also have another swivel of the trap. But this, you can drive that down into frozen ground, no problem. Uh, they don't, that's not gonna break. I've never broken one of those. Uh, they are a little more pricey, but man, it, even with the Berkshire stakes, trying to drive them in some of the ground around here with rocks, it's next to impossible. Uh, that's definitely the way to go, unless you're gonna use a drag. You know, that's the only other way to get away with it. I had the same problem with, with uh, rock and like super hard ground. Not even when it's frozen, but the, the, it's like hard packed clay. And, uh, you know, a lot of the fields and stuff that I trap were constantly tilled every year. They're tilled and then they're, you know, they're plowed and they're packed. So the ground gets freaking packed down. Uh, but th these work really well. Okay, I can see I've driven the. The, uh, the cookie cutter down in there. Get the hole open. My stuff here. This 
is actually an existing hole. This is a, a chipmunk hole. I just seen it in the ground here. I cleared some of the grass around from it. See, lots of rock. Lots and lots of rocks. Doesn't matter where you where you dig. It's all like all you get. Another rock. I have a digger fox, the worst enemy. I did catch a fox here last year that escaped on me. When I came back, there was just a toenail in one of the traps. That's all it got him by. And he never came back. I never caught him again because I checked all the foxes I trapped to see if he had a missing toenail. <laughs> so he never, it might be him this year and he's a year older and a year wiser. These are Bridger 175s. They're pretty good all around predator traps. A bobcat. It's, it, people would consider it kind of small on the small side for a coyote, but for fox, coon, or bobcat, don't have any issues with it. Now here's the anchor. Here's the driver for it. It's just a, a milled down steel pole, steel bar. Driver sits right in there, so it can't slip off. It'll, it'll never slip off. Now the head of this point is solid. Start it into the ground. Now we're getting down at the real hard pack. I told you that ground was hard. That's rock right there. Bedrock. That's it, that's all she wrote. Now what I'm gonna do, <coughs> widen the hole just a little bit. Set that, which is not coming out. You make the hole a little wider. The chain and the swivel will actually fit right down in the hole. Hold up my tag. And that way, the trap is not teeter tottering on the tag. On the swivel, push it down into the hole. That's one thing about center swivel freaking pet traps. They can be a pain. Want any little sticks like that getting in your set? That is a no no. I don't want that trap to move. 
steps on the jaw before he steps on the pan. He'll dig it. He'll dig it right out. And that is maybe an issue I had yesterday. Right, when I set that one set here just up from here, he might have felt it move just a hair and then started digging. Pack the dirt inside the jar. You don't want to feel the steel. If you if you can push down on it and you can feel the steel, the fox is going to do the same thing. So you want to make sure there's enough dirt on it cover the steel. You don't mind the dirt being soft over the pan because once he stepped on it it's too late. So much rock I took out of there in one, <laughs> just in the depth of a pan. That's it. Now, <clears throat> let me see again here. Actually, what I might do pine needles that makes good cover. I don't want that little stone in there. And I want to leave the area of my pan clear. I don't want anything on there. Because <coughs> I can cover the rest of this up encourage him to walk on that and this is a natural chipmunk hole I didn't make that hole I just happened to see it when I was walking past it here's a hammer I made 
for the sod hammer, just a regular uh, builder sledgehammer, and I welded a quarter inch flight steel onto the back of it for digging the sod. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this stuff, some of it you can make yourself. That's it. So that is full. It's not totally blended. It's pretty well blended. I still want them to see the hole. Now, I get my lure bag. going to use some uh, I'm going to use some cavens predator bait don't need much even that's a little bit much but that down in the hole. And I'm gonna use a different smell again. This is Hot Baker's Gray Fox. I'm not gonna use the same lures that I had on the other sets. I use different ones. Whew. Wow. This is a this is almost like gusto. It has a strong odor. This is a strong, strong odor. need much of that, a couple of drips. I'm gonna hit it with that. And then, I don't think I'm gonna use urine on this one. This is another lure here. This is crossbreed. It's a predator lure. This is a food call or it'll work for coyote, fox, coon, bobcat, any type of predator. They change up the lures from set to set, especially when I have them set close together. I won't leave them the same. Now Clean up all our stuff and get out of here and see if that produces tomorrow. Okay, I put one more. Well, it wasn't a, a man made dirt hole, it was a chipmunk made dirt hole. I put one set in there, I uh, put one flat set in. Uh, Digger Fox, man, they can be aggravating. Like I said, sometimes if he feels the trap or if he steps on it, Alcoon will do the same thing though. If he feels the, the trap and he steps on it, they'll freaking dig it right out. Or, or sometimes they'll flip. Coon will sometimes feel, feel it with his foot because they're, they're real sensitive hands and they'll flip it over. But I put two other sets in. I left the sets that they dug. I 
just recovered them and just left them alone. Now I know I had no scent on those traps, none. But those traps were boiled. They were put in a, a scent-free environment. Uh, they, were, they weren't touched by human hands. I put them in the ground and when I did that I wore rubber gloves that were clean. I don't use the same gloves if I'm going to make a remake. If I'm remaking a set, I have a separate set of gloves for that because the set will then smell like fox or smell like coon or smell like possum or whatever you got caught in that trap. And that's okay. I've remade sets where I've caught a possum and not changed the trap. And the following day I had a fox in it. So if you trap an animal, it will attract other animals. Uh, they'll have a tendency to come and investigate what was going on. If they, if you, they think, wow, something found something there, maybe I'll find something there, and they'll go and investigate it. Especially if you have a cat, uh, like if you have a fox that leaves a cat circle, that is going to attract other foxes. Uh, there's no doubt. I've I've caught uh, multiple foxes from one set, and all the other sets that I had around that area were in touch bar the one that caught the fox. That's the first one they're going to go to. Uh, but we'll see what happens. See if we can catch the digger fox.